Okay, so I thought I'd do a quick video here about uh, Ag Open GPS and uh, just show what it can do. Not everybody has simulators and all the cabling and stuff to get it to work, so I thought I'd make a quick video. So when you first run it, first thing it says is COM ports do not exist. You have to set those up. So under settings, COM ports, pick your port, and the baud rate, and connect. Now I have a simulator running. These are the NMEA codes that are spit out by the simulator. Um, we're using GGA and VTG, vertical tracking, and the guidance one. And if you see these, it's working. If you don't see these, it's not working. You can rescan the ports. Suppose you plug something else in, that sort of thing. Here's a section control. I won't bother with that right now. And how quickly does it update? 5 hertz, 1 hertz, 10 hertz, whatever. It's best to use 5 hertz in this program. And save that. All right. Now, since we've been doing a lot of changes, uh, the red dot's the antenna, the green dot is the pivot axle, that's the hitch, and here's the tool. So first going into settings, first thing you do is make your vehicle. So it's all done a lot of changes in terms of the graphical interface. So you just answer all the questions. Is the tool behind or is it ahead? Is it ahead like a combine or a swather? Or is it behind like a high clearance sprayer or a air seeder? And the type of how is it attached? Is it rigidly attached like a like a high clearance sprayer? Or is it trailing like a set of harrows or a, a pull type sprayer or an air seeder, that sort of thing. Uh, pivot point, you have a steering axle and you have a pivot point. And is this pivot point behind the antenna or is it ahead of the antenna? And so you can choose either that, ahead of antenna or behind the antenna. And how far is it? How many inches is that pivot point behind the antenna? Um, like in a combine, you'd have your big wheels and then you might have the antenna on in behind. So then it would be the pivot points ahead of the antenna. That's pretty rare. We'll just take a peek, to put some examples up here quick. So you have your pivot points and different stuff. You have a rigid hitch behind your pivot point on a high clearance spur, on a combine. You know, you have your wheelbase. These are your steering wheels back here. Steering is behind. Pivot point. It's uh, so many different combinations of, of equipment that uh, they all have to be adjustable and settable. So a rigid hitch, anything talking about a hitch, rigidly attached to the vehicle, that's what's called a rigid hitch. If it's trailing and it can flex, then it's called a trailing hitch. Confusing, but well, what do you do? There's again lots of combinations. So back to the vehicle. So we're going to make a an air seeder out of this. So where the tool is behind and it's trailing and the pivot point is behind the antenna by 40 inches, 4 feet. Steering axle is ahead, it's not behind. The steering is ahead. And the wheelbase of the vehicle, whatever, 190. Antenna height, how high is the antenna off the ground? Because as the antenna will move side to side as it uh, goes on side hills, so you need to know the height to determine where on your AB line the antenna should be. Hitch length, again, this is just the rigid part. If that was a header on a swather, it would be out the front. Um, or a pull type hitch on the tractor from the center of the wheel to the hitch. And you just put that in. It's usually around 24, 28 inches, that sort of thing. The tool itself, and here's the distance for the trailing hitch. We'll call that like 150 inches long hitch. And uh, skip and overlap. How much overlap do you want? 4 inches, 10 inches, foot, that sort of thing. Overlap. If you want a skip, just go negative. Here would be negative 2 feet of overlap. Pretty simple. Let's make it a foot again. And look ahead. How far ahead do you want to turn the booms on? Like if you're 2 seconds away from your last pass, um, then you already turn the booms on ahead of time. I mean, this It's in all the GPS's you've already set, so no different. Turn off delay, how long, um, how long you want it to stay on for. And tool offset, not implemented yet. Don't know if I ever will. I don't, I don't know if anybody owns anything that's got an offset. Just put the antenna in the middle of the tool and you're good. Uh, sections. I can understand this one causing some problems, but 
you set how many sections you want. This is a little tractor up here, or supposed to be the where the antenna is, and you measure out from the center to the outside 315 inches and negative 315 inches on the left side. So four booms, so from the center, 101 inches over and 101 inches over. Makes 202 for a boom width. From 101 to 315, so this is 315 inches over from the center, so you're left with 214. It does all the calculations for you. You just gotta put in where along the boom the dividers are for the section. You can change the total width, and that also changes all these numbers for you. So we'll make a 40 foot air seeder. So 40 feet. So right away you know that you're 240 inches out from the center on both sides. And uh, we'll say it's a two section, yeah, five section air seeder. So now they're all eight foot booms. So five times eight feet is 40 feet. Look at that, it works. Um, examples you saw, guidance, nothing there, display. This is for display smoothing, how quickly you want the display to react to the changes. Uh, this is a good setting, you can set it to wherever you want, you can play with it. Save, if you exit, nothing is saved, not a single thing. So you click save. So there we are. I'm not driving very well today. Speed up. So and as usual, the sections. So it's about a second after it turns off. Here, two seconds before it turns back on again. And that's your look ahead and turn off delay. Oh, you can set those accordingly as, as long as you want. So pretty simple, works great for writing the software. You can turn a vehicle track on. I'm going to be using this vehicle tracking for, uh, for contour mode and that sort of thing. Maybe making shape files, but it just records where the implement's been and where the the uh, vehicle has been. And these are the individual triangles, and that's how the whole program works. Is it just makes these sets of triangles. And we'll slow down. And then the uh, once the triangle's made, you have a track, and then another screen in behind this looks at that. If it's green, it turns it on, or turns it off. Sorry, and if it's black. It's not applied, so then you turn it back on again. Well, that's really simple. You can have 2D or 3D, and this is all also into settings. You can save vehicles and load vehicles. Like, suppose you wanted to save this and call it Combine Forum Vehicle and save it. And then any changes you want to make for another vehicle, that sort of thing, uh, you can always go back, load your multiple vehicles. So you can make a combine, you can make a swather, you can make, again, high clearance sprayer, air seeder, whatever you want. Uh, you can save entire fields. You want to save this field, and it gives you the date. Uh, open a field. It'll save the A, B lines and everything. And uh, A, B line, sorry. Plop down your A point. And you can do it either way. You can make a B point and then adjust the, the angle to whatever you want. Say so you want to do the field for some reason at 45 degrees. Whoops. At 45 degrees. Or you can just reset the B line again. Anything you want, angle or A B point. Save it. So there you are following A B line. Hope to do auto steer here this winter. Down here at the bottom, it, green light means that there's communication happening. If you drop the communication, then that turns pretty red, meaning you have nothing left. Get rid of the A B line. Delete. And there you go. Works good.